Okay. Tom and Jenny, we're back at it again. And yeah, we're back at it again. We just got done seeing uh, Overlord, which was uh, it's a World War II movie about Operation Overlord, which was a a movie about uh, my unit actually. It's uh, they're talking about the 506th and the 101st Airborne Division. You know, they uh, they're all they all got spades on their helmets and uh, lead NCO inside the inside the uh, the bird was uh, you know said cur heat everybody so that was my old unit that was 506 and um, overlord was uh, about putting a bunch of paratroopers behind the defenses uh, right right before d-day to kind of like soften the uh, the German response to d-day and uh, in this one uh, the guys you know they, they get scattered just like the, just like we actually did or my unit actually did but this small team of guys find a uh, an experimental uh, medical facility that the Germans were doing to uh, make some super soldiers. Kind of reminded me something out of this movie that was an old movie called Shockwaves. Kind of a lot yeah, like that. Similar. They were making this serum, and uh, shit happens basically. All right. Uh, the movie, uh, to me, I'm, I'm going to give you the good first, and I'll give you the bad, you know, and then Jenny can give her opinion. The movie has a very authentic look to the equipment. Uh, it, They spent a lot of money to make this look like a World War II movie. Um, the acting was good. Uh, everybody did a pretty good job in it. Uh, the big downfall for me in the movie that kept throwing me out of it is that at this time in actual history during Operation Market Garden, the 506 was a segregated unit. There were no black guys in it. All the black paratroopers were in the 505th, or excuse me, the 555 or the triple nickel. And I got guys in my unit watching this video right now. Some of them are black, like my buddy Kennedy. There weren't any black dudes, you know, and that's kind of disrespectful. It's kind of throwing me out of it. It's like denying segregation. I mean, what are they gonna deny next? They're gonna deny the Holocaust? So I didn't really like that aspect of it. It seems like they're just trying to make a buck, you know. Now you could come back and say, well, this is an alternate universe. And, and that may have been an angle, but the thing is, is that they didn't really, they didn't really portray it as that. You, you've got to choose a lane and stick with it. You know what I mean? So that part of it, the tone wasn't right, if you ask me. I think they really should have done what another movie did, which is very similar, and I think superior to this movie, was Frankenstein's Army. Frankenstein's Army was clearly a horror movie, you know, set in World War II, and that it had a lot of sci-fi elements to it. It, 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 it. it was more fun to watch. It was, you're obviously watching something that's kind of cartoonish. And I think that's the way they should have gone with this movie. I think uh, they tried to go with realism, and I think it backfired for me. I didn't think uh, the horror was effective in it. I didn't think it was scary. I didn't think it was very innovative. Uh, and then the World War II sequences, because there were some firefights in them, I didn't think they were very inspiring. I, I just, uh, oh, oh, a firefight just happened? Okay, whatever. They weren't. So, I think the, what really pisses me off about this movie is that it, this could have been something really great, but they just fucking blew it, if you ask me. It just just wasn't any fun to watch, you know? I didn't, I didn't think it was. Um, I didn't think it was scary and I didn't think it was exciting. They should have, I think Frankenstein's Army was a superior movie to this. So, I can't really recommend it. What do you think, Jenny? I disagree, I actually yep. really, really liked this movie. Okay. Um, I thought it was really well paced. Um, I thought it was, like, had some really creepy moments. All the acting was really good. I liked a lot of the gore. Um, you know, it's very violent and uh, that kind of shit. Um, you know, the realism aspect doesn't really bother me. I mean, you're talking about super soldiers. It's kind of supernatural, really, so I'm not really concerned about, you know, the people in it and what. That really doesn't uh, didn't occur to me. So, um, but honestly, like, I really liked... I really liked it. I really did. I just... I was riveted through the whole thing. I just... There was some really nice, like... Uh, creepy shots in it, like the cinematography was really nice. Um, yeah. you know, oh, it was well filmed. I it was always, a well-made movie. 
It is. I always enjoy seeing uh, Nazis get fucked up, so yeah. that's that was a plus. Um, but yeah, it's like really, I you know, I really really enjoyed it, and I'm surprised that you didn't. But, no, I didn't like it. But I really really liked it a lot. And I did. I would recommend it, even if Tom would not. Yeah, I didn't think it was a very good World War II movie. I didn't think I didn't think the World War II action or the the, the firefights were were exciting at all, and I didn't think the horror was that good. I, I, the super soldier aspect of it, it just it, it wasn't it wasn't scary to me. Just you know, I, I thought Frankenstein's army freaked, freaked me out. You know, when they were sewing well, stuff together. Well, that was together. almost more of a horror comedy. Yeah, it was almost this like a horror comedy. Not a comedy. No, this not did at all. Not have any comedic. No, 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 not at all. This was a serious horror yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. I just I, I, there was something about something so about it's the time. It, it's really kind of two different genres. Yeah, I think that they should have gone the route of of, of, of like uh, Frankenstein's on. I, I think know. that would have been really, better. It's it's funny because when I saw the trailer, yeah. I think the trailer made it look more like Frankenstein's army, but yeah. I liked that it was more serious because I was I was thinking that it was going to be more like that, but I'm glad it yeah. wasn't actually because they already made Frankenstein's army. Yeah, you don't need another one of those. That's also that's also a really good. Movie. I just but I actually really did like this. Just the way it was, I just kind of thought it was boring. I, my, my mind was kept wandering during it. I was like, "Yeah, all right, yeah, okay." There's a super soldier serum. And I was like, "All right," but that's not the, that impressive. Now that now you're right, there was a couple couple of scenes in there that I was like, "Oh wow, this is gonna be all right." Like when they found the head. Yeah. And I got spoil it for they found this head and it that that freaked me out. Uh, I was like, "Wow, you know, this thing's gonna be pretty intense probably," but it never never really delivered on that level. And then. Um, there was an, another thing that, that I think they, they got a lot right, but they just it just missed it for me. It just it missed the mark. I didn't I didn't have a strong reaction to it. I didn't really care. It just seemed kind of mediocre. That's okay. I really I really enjoyed it. I was like I thought yeah. it was like really riveting. I thought it was really yeah. exciting. It's like like I said, it was really well paced. It was there, I didn't think there was any boring parts. It just yeah. it went right from one thing to another. I thought it was like I hated it, and the reason why I hated it is not because it did anything wrong. I hated it because it was just so mediocre. It was like it, to me, it was like a missed opportunity that they really could have done something good with it with the right tweaks. But it just I just I just thought it was kind of boring. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we got to repeat. All right. <laughs> Okay. Thanks. Okay, Jenny and I are back at it again at AMC. Uh, here, you want to hold this, Jenny, or you want me to hold it? No, because I'll put my finger over. You put your finger over thing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we just got done seeing the girl in the spider's web. Yes. Uh, what'd you think of it? I actually thought it was fantastic. Um, I'm really, I really liked the um, original series. Like I read the books, and then I saw both the Swedish and the uh, American remakes when it came out, and I liked all of those. Um, this is obviously, uh, you know, the guy that wrote the Millennium Trilogy passed away many years ago. So um, this is like a story with all the same characters and with the same, you know, feel to it. But it was, you know, written by someone else, obviously. So they just kind of took it. I actually really like. It had. Um, Sort of a James Bond type feel, That's but what I was not, say. you know, but, yeah. but more grounded, I guess. Yeah. Kind, of, um, yeah. kind of a more realistic, sort of slightly more realistic, um, and not as it you know, toned glamorous. Down a bit, you know, yeah. not as glamorous, yeah. obviously, because it's you know it's set in Stockholm. It's all very snowy and all and, very square. You notice everything there is square. Yeah. Square buildings, square roofs. Everything's yeah. gray. Had a good winter theme. Too, yeah, matched and, right now. and actually, yeah, that kind of goes along with um with all the other movies as yeah. well because a lot of them kind of had that same just everything was white and and everything like that. But it was actually this was a really good story. Like I said, it was same uh same kind of thing as the other ones, except you know obviously if someone's gonna kick Elizabeth Salander's ass or is actually gonna be thing with her because you know if, if you know from the old one like she's like a super genius computer hacker or anything like that, it's gonna be someone who's related to her so you have somebody who's on the same level as her so you know the stakes are much higher um in the at the end actually reminded me a little bit of skyfall where he's like returning to your childhood home yeah. and that type of thing you so like that i said too. Yeah, yeah, yeah so like i said it had a very uh james bond kind of feel but with yeah. a different kind of spin on it i guess yeah. yeah okay i liked it yeah i liked it yeah basically what you're dealing with is a, is a swedish spy movie yeah even exactly. though even though the uh the main character is a hacker. She's very spy-like, and she's dealing with 
dealing with, you know, CIA agents and, you know, rogue criminal terrorist type organizations. Uh, good gunplay. Uh, a lot of times, though, they showed the gun so quickly I couldn't really ad identify what make and model certain things were. Me being a gun freak, I'm like, yeah, wait, what like, was that? Like, what was that? <laughs> be like, which one was that? Which one was that? Uh, she has a pretty cool bike. It, uh, it, it's a um, Ducati Monster. It looked like one of the air-cooled models, which kind of reminds me of my, my Buell Lightnings that I have, you know. So she had pretty good take. Had knobbies on it. It was pretty cool. <laughs> so she, she had some pretty cool taste in motorcycles, pretty good gear. Uh, the story, I would say very much in the vein of James Bond and, uh, uh, you know, like uh, Mission Impossible, because there was some group action where her and the spies were doing missions together, even though it kind of happened by accident, but that's just just the way it is. When you see it, you know, if you like, if you like the new Bond and you liked uh, Mission Impossible, this is right there with it. Yeah. Yeah, and good. like I said, if if you like the other, if you like yeah. the books particularly, because I love the books, I read all yeah. three of them in like uh, two days or something like that. Yeah. Um, and actually, I really like the Swedish films they made uh, from it, and the American remakes were also very yeah. good. And the American remakes actually had Daniel Craig in them, so yeah, another James Bond. I saw the connection uh, there when I saw the trailer to this movie. I didn't think I was going to like it, uh, but what you're seeing in the trailer is like the first five minutes of the damn movie. It has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. It's like the first five minutes and yeah. like the last five minutes. Yeah. there's a whole bunch whole of bunch other stuff shit going happens. On. In the middle, in the middle. Of it. <laughs> and it, it's uh, uh, it, it's good. It can stand on its own. It can compete with with a Bond flick or a Mission Impossible flick without really copying them. It is its own yeah. thing. But it, if you like the those two series, you, uh, you will like this. Yeah, it's and good. I should say that even if you haven't seen the other ones. Um, this one is fairly easy to follow. Uh, it does have some yeah, it, callbacks to the other ones, like Mikhail Blum, uh, Blumquist is in this also. And yeah. so, so there's some shit there with some ca repeating characters. Her yeah. hacker character, who I think it's, his name is Plague, if I remember the book correctly. Yeah, but you don't need but to see you it, You don't though. need to have seen it. It's yeah. like, you know, you'll pretty much catch on to what's going on. It's pretty well explained. It's pretty well laid out. I saw the Na Naomi Rapace ones. Yeah. But it was so long ago, I don't remember anything about them. And they, I remember yeah. it being, like, kind of slow. They uh, were a tad. This, this one was one a lot was faster not, paced, yeah. um, I yeah. feel like, than the other ones. I mean, the other one, the first one, with, uh, you know, the girl with the dragon tattoo, yeah. was actually more of a mystery yeah. than a, a spy thriller. This is a spy thriller. But this is definitely a spy thriller, like right. an international terrorism yeah. type of thing. And I, I like to, uh, you know, even the fact that, you know, when, when you look at her, I mean, we've got to be honest, folks, she's a 110-pound girl. She's not going to be beating fucking ass, you know what I mean? But she does go hand-to-hand -hand with some guys and how she does it is kind of realistic you know what i mean yeah. she, she's they mostly didn't armed her, they didn't make her super no strong, she's not super words. strong and she did get in a fight with a guy who's man must have weighed twice what she weighed and yeah he whipped her ass that's when I mean. she does get her ass kicked on several right occasions. and you so know, it's not like a kind of thing where, i oh. fought guys that weighed twice when a guy can <laughs> pick you up it's kind of all over. There's not much you can do yeah. if a guy can just pick you up. Yeah, that's You know true. what I mean? And that's, that's... But yeah, like I said, I mean, you know, obviously with a spy thriller and with some yeah. there's going to be like a little bit of suspension of disbelief, but I really didn't find that much at all. It's, you know, there was nothing in there. I was going, no way. Nobody will do that. You know what I mean? It's, it was pretty like fairly realistic, I thought. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah. I'd actually want to see the second part because I know that this is going to be a series. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to do another trilogy now because yeah, the first one sure. was a trilogy. Why wouldn't they? I think the movie will do well. I think it and, will, too. Uh, it's a, I, I actually really liked it a and, lot. It was enthralling. Yeah, I'd put this right next to my uh, Mission Impossible and my uh, James Bond DVDs, or right. Blu-rays. I'm I glad think you it enjoyed it. Yeah, you didn't think <laughs> I was going to like this one. I didn't like Overlord. I, I, didn't, think, I didn't think you were going to. I thought it was going to be the total opposite. I thought you were going to no. like Overlord and not No, this didn't like Overlord. I liked this one. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I recommend it. It's a good movie. Yeah, good movie. it's really good. Okay, it's Tom and Jenny. We're back at it again. Just got done seeing uh, The Grinch. And, uh, you know, it's based on how The Grinch stole Christmas. Yep. It's a good Dr. Seuss uh, movie and book. I grew up watching the do uh, or uh, reading the Dr. Seuss books when I was a little kid. And uh, what did you think of this one, Jenny? Tell, tell us I about actually it. thought it was adorable. Um, they really expanded the story out. I mean, obviously, everyone's very familiar with the... Uh, original one, the animated one that had like Boris Karloff doing the voice of the Grinch. Yeah. Um, but that, you know, that one was only like 24 minutes long. Yeah. Um, so a lot of stuff, you know, it's, it's very short. But this one, since it's kind of expanded out to movie length, you know, they went into a lot of 
um, his planning and like all the crazy shit that he built, you know what I mean, to like steal the Who's Christmas and everything. And then they also made Cindy Lou Who kind of like a larger character um, and how she was going to try and kidnap Santa because she had to ask him something and all this other stuff. So there was like the two, uh, they kind of kept a cool you know, little parallels between the two characters going on. Had a little bit, like, uh, I liked the relationship between uh, the Grinch and Max. They almost had kind of a little Wallace and Gromit thing Wait, going on, where they had, like, a, um, oh, you know. You see a pigeon, but also it, it, <laughs> Sometimes people walk yeah. away. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so they had kind of a Wallace and Gromit thing going, where they had, like, all these crazy gadgets, like, you know, and Max would, like, bring his coffee, like, up with these little you know, Rube Goldberg devices and stuff like that. So they use that in there. But yeah, and like I said, animation, beautiful. Um, you know, it all very Christmassy, all the snow and all the lights and everything like that. All the hair and the fur, like, looked really cool. Um, I didn't, I didn't know, like, because when I saw the trailers, I was like, oh, that probably looks like it's going to be cute. But I wasn't sure if I was on board with um, Benedict Cumberbatch doing the voice for the Grinch. But actually, I think it kind of worked. Yeah, that was the only thing that, that was one of the main issues I had when I first started watching the movies. Like, man, this voice does not match what I remember as a kid. Now you told me that was Boris Karloff and it yeah. made a lot more sense. But as he gets a little more evil in certain parts, in certain scenes, he does start to sound more like the Grinch that I remembered. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing, uh, the, the, this movie succeeds on all fronts where Nutcracker failed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, this was super fun. I, this is everything that Disney is not doing nowadays. It's it's uh, a lot of fun, good morality tales. Uh, they did kind of keep the the uh, what a real Christmas theme is about. Matter of fact, they sang some real Christmas carols in the background. It was a lot of Christmas music. Yeah, uh, and modern and modern know, and traditional. The traditional. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't kind of shying away and totally secularizing Christmas. There's a couple little things in there. You go, yeah, they are saying that the Christmas is a religious. Uh, uh, thing you know, which I like that. Um, the music is good. The the way the, the the animation is really good. It's astounding. Yeah, it's really. astounding. It, it did capture this real weird surreal quality of being cartoonish and real at the same time. Like you, some of the stuff really looks like it's there, like the paint chipping off of little things on the walls and these, it was just really good. Yeah, the details, amazing. Yeah. I mean, obviously this is, you know, the same studio, it's the Illumination yeah. Studio, same ones that do, uh, you know, Despicable yeah. Me and all those kind of And it's movies. hilarious. So, the, uh, the, it is very funny. The, the, uh, <laughs> the physical comedy was very good. So I really uh, would say that in the genre of a Christmas movie for the family, this one is up there. I, you know, this is one that I would definitely take this over, The Nutcracker. Well, the yeah, Nutcracker was that, just yeah, really was hollow just really and stale. Not, yeah, but this one was like, like I said, a super fun. Like all the characters, yeah. all the detail. Like there's just such great little gags in yeah. it, and it's just like so beautiful. The camera to look angles, at. Yeah. Uh, you just, it's just everything about it. This is a, this is a top notch Christmas movie. Yeah, you know? and put you in the holiday spirit. Yeah, exactly. I mean, because look, my, choke look, you up at the yeah, end and everything. Yeah. You know, I mean, so. my atheist ass, I yeah. love Christmas, man. I <laughs> yeah. do. No, it's like, see, and, and yeah. I love, and I've always loved the Grinch, uh, you know, the cartoon one back, but I think this one, I didn't see the Jim Carrey one because I couldn't deal yeah. with that. But like, but this one is really a worthy successor. Like I said, yeah. it's, and it, you know, it expands out the universe. You get to music meet done by Danny Elfman. Yeah, um, you get to meet a lot of the townsfolk. You know, all yeah. the who's and like, there's a lot more yeah. character development and stuff like that. So, and you get to kind of look a little bit into the Grinch's past and like yeah. why he's such why he didn't like Christmas. why he's so crabby. And I have to say, little baby Grinch, like when he's a little kid. Yeah. Adorable. Yes, yeah. that, that was adorable. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I think we both agree that uh, they knocked it out of the park with this one. Yeah, it was really, really good. If you want to see a Christmas movie, this is one you need to see. Yep.